Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion earlier and we had a very productive discussion students are very curious to know a lot of things associated with this course and about certain future scope of this kind of content of this course also so today we'll uh, discuss further if you have any questions related to this course or anything that you have not understood uh, you can post your questions here I will take as many as possible so we have one hour time so let's see how much we can uh, cover uh, during this time so before we get uh, get any questions some of the questions are also posted in the google doc so we'll start from there only and in the meantime when i get live questions i will uh, take as we proceed okay so in the google doc one student his name is not given how a human can be happy and carefree for his or her problems and how can I ignore my problems so <coughs> this question is again it says it's a kind of very broad and abstract question uh, and many times it is not very easy to give a very specific answer to this kind of questions primarily because when you talk about you know you want to get relief from all kinds of problems of your life uh, which is not going to happen in anybody's life life will have a lot of problems stress issues and uh, various kinds of issues so you cannot be you know relieved from all kinds of problems of your life only thing what we can do we can uh, learn to manage or learn to cope with or deal with the problems of your life that is the the skills that we need to refine and this whole course is about those kind of things only so we should not expect that life will not have any problem and uh, you will be carefree for the rest of your life which is not going to happen because our life human society is not designed like this you know there will be constant problems and issues and various kinds of problems will come uh, so the thing is what is the most productive approach towards life should be you know whatever comes you know you cannot really have much control over it uh, whatever you can control it, try to control it as much as possible. But a lot, lot of things are beyond our control. They will anyway come to you and various kinds of problems and issues. Most of them are beyond our control. So the most important thing is how to deal with them, how to cope with them. So in that context, we have all elaborately discussed about coping strategies in uh, many lectures. So there is a whole section, almost two modules on coping strategies. And we have elaborately discussed what are the different ways we can cope with the problems and stressful situations of our life. Uh, we divided these strategies into various categories. We started. We talked about physical ways of coping, where we uh, try to understand even at the physical level, such as doing exercise and other, you uh, know, practices like relaxation exercises and those kind of things. At the even very physical level, most like like a first aid kind of thing that we talk about in medical, you uh, know discipline uh, we can cope with the problems at the physical level or we can cope with the problems at the mental level which is most very important actually because most of the problems and stressful uh, experiences are created by our mind so it is the mind that creates all these problems by our interpretation by our perception so at the mental level how can we address a lot of these problems are exaggerated objectively they are not that problematic but our mind exaggerates it's too much and the the, uh, the the intensity and the duration of stress actually increases uh, so how can we understand all these things and how can we deal with that part 
particularly how you think about certain issues of your life or problems or objective circumstances of your life uh, that is very important because because it, the way you think is the way you feel that is the most important you know concept that we have discussed in the concept of Albert Ellis theory which is called as ABC theory where we understand our feelings are very closely connected to our thought processes the nature of thoughts and nature of emotions are very kind of congruent to each other so these are the things that we have already discussed uh, and uh, please go to those lectures elaborately i have discussed and it would be very helpful to you uh, so the most important thing is healthy approach towards life is you know try to understand how to deal with the problems cope with the problem uh, rather than trying to you know, remove problems and all the issues so that is uh, one of the best approach that you can take okay so some questions have started coming so we'll also take you know both both the ways the live question as well as uh, the questions that are there in the google uh, sheet so mohana krishna is asking how to identify one strength and weakness individually any task or experiment you suggest see mohana i mean in this uh, module 10 i think we have two elaborate lectures on uh, strength signature strength so one of the thing that we can do as a human being is to enhance in terms of enhance well-being and happiness in our life is to identify our strengths <coughs> and talents and potentials that is very important you know uh, so there are different approaches to look at it from the psychological perspective you know uh, there are different classification of human strengths and uh, talents how to understand that when we talk about talent basically it's a natural uh, predisposition that is given to you and strength is something when you use those talent to actually you know consistently in your life then it becomes strength your talent becomes strength also there are two elaborate lectures on psychological strength uh, from two different approaches how to identify how to enhance and how to use that in our life elaborately discussed in those lecture so in the module 10 that is there so the uh, two lectures are already devoted on uh, signature strengths and how to find that how to use that more and more how to enhance that so kindly go to those lectures uh, you will understand all the aspects of psychological strength uh, polini <coughs> venkata is asking uh, model question paper see the, regarding the final question paper i think the questions will be just like this you know assignment questions uh, very similar no mcq type of questions will be there in your final exam patterns of questions will be very similar to those assignment questions but don't think that all the questions will be from the assignments few question may be from the assignment but uh, a lot of questions may come beyond the assignments so you need to read uh, the various concepts uh, covered in the in the lecture in order to really answer confidently in the exam so similar question was also asked in the google sheet about how to prepare for this exam so the best is obviously you know uh, the model questions is like you know those assignment questions on the mcq type of questions uh, so so every lecture will have various keywords and key concepts so try to understand all these concepts try to understand what is the meaning of all these concepts and the various things that are associated with so go through the lecture notes uh, go to the video lectures uh, at least most of the lecture notes will have all the main concept discussed may not be that elaborately video will have a lot of elaborate explanations of all this concept your lecture note will have at least summarized form of all the concepts so go through all this concept try to understand what is the meaning of it if you don't understand go to the video lectures and uh, hear about the explanation then it will become much more clear so all these lectures and every modules ha had may have many important concepts technical definitions and the various concepts so try to understand what is the meaning of all these things uh, then you will not have any problem in answering questions uh, so this is the thing that i would like to say about exams so model questions will be just like uh, assignment questions mcq type questions so there will be question and there will be four options you have to choose one option Rajni Kant is asking, sir, your voice is not audible fairly. Probably it will be solved now. 
because there was some background noise <coughs> kamalika is asking how a narcissist person overcomes the obstacle in gratitude to achieve happiness uh, <coughs> kamalika narcissistic personality is a personality trait when you say something as personality trait it is with the understanding that you know it is a kind of the characteristics is inbuilt in that person for whatever reason from the childhood conditioning or some genetic reasons may be there the person develops certain characteristics and which becomes almost fixated within that person so those those characteristics are almost like almost permanent i will not say permanent uh, but these are very enduring characteristics so by personality characteristics we define that person and one person is different from another person is primarily because of those differences in the traits so i can say this pers person x is a extrovert person person y is an introvert person so i am distinguishing their characteristics in terms of certain enduring characteristics so similarly uh, when we talk about uh, a narcissistic person the so there are certain characteristics about those kind of individuals they are very self obsessed they always wants to be center of attention uh, the if they they are not hard properly they become very aggressive so their self esteem is very unstable so that is why they seek constant attention that is one of the characteristics of narcissistic people and when you become too self obsessed one thing that will happen is that you know you cannot experience gratitude gratitude so for experiencing gratitude or thankfulness towards other individuals or towards the life itself uh, you have to understand and be open to the contribution of other people in your life if you are so full of yourself one thing that will happen that you know you will not see the contribution of other people you will not see the grandiousness and the the how other people are you know helping you in so many ways for that you have to be open and see that and give focus on other people also so narcissistic people one of the problem is that you know they are not able to they are too self obsessed and they don't recognize the contribution of other people so that is why it is one of the obstacle in gratitude uh so changing personality is not easy it is because it is very in depth it is very you know deeper characteristics having said that nothing is impossible i should not make a statement that it is impossible to change but it will be difficult uh, one thing that should happen most prob first thing is for to change your characteristic is that you should realize that there is some problem in it uh, for example in the narcissistic personality probably the people around you all the time will kind of you know make you realize that something is wrong the way your attitude the way you are behaving with people is not right people will constantly remind you so if you realize that so this is the first thing realization is the first important step then slowly slowly you can make changes obviously things will come automatically as a, as your characteristic but slowly slowly if you realize hey, this is not the right approach to look at life or look at other people or to deal with other people because it is hurting other people if you realize that that is most of I mean, the almost the major work is done here only then slowly slowly you will try to reduce those behavior which will not be easy initially but it can be done uh, but changing personality characteristics is not easy it, it, it takes time a lot of motivation and attention and you uh, know is needed sometimes uh, help of other people can be also very important some professional help or people from near near and dear ones Uh, that can be also helpful uh, so if one person realizes that uh, the kind of behavior that he is he or she is doing is not appropriate or it is hurting other people then i think it will not be that difficult the person can change slowly slowly it may not happen overnight but it can be done Aditya is asking, sir, can you give us some tips how we should socially interact to each other? Uh, see, social interaction there is no rule as such how to interact with other people. You know, it all depends on what kind of person you are meeting with, what kind of social situations. You know, uh, so the only thing what I discussed in that course is that the social support is very important. Uh, as a human being, we are social animal. and we constantly seek connection with other people this is a kind of natural tendency we cannot live alone and isolated so this this is an inbuilt tendency within all human being we want to connect with people make relationship and uh, uh, that in, 
so interaction and building relationship is natural thing if that tendency or we are not able to fulfill that need uh, it will be not it will not good for our well being so people who live isolated alone you know they are most likely to be depressed and other emotional problems may uh, may be experienced by those kind of people uh, so social relationship is very important this is the most important thing uh, so it doesn't mean that you have to be surrounded by a lot of people all the time the thing is that you know at least you should connect with few people who can understand and you know you can share your problems and all the difficulties uh, so if you if if you feel remembered in that lecture i talked about a convoy model where i discussed you know so there will be a inner circle there is a middle circle and there is an outer circle inner circle uh, should include people who are very close to you where you can share with all the problems all the <coughs> uh whatever comes to your mind you can discuss with those kind of people it may include you no know, your very close friends your parents your siblings whatever it is you know so in the inner circle at least few people should be there so that is very very important uh you can build social relationship if you think there is a you know uh, not enough kind of people around you so i have already discussed in that social uh, you know uh, in one of the lecture social support as a coping strategy where we said there are many ways to do that but most important is obviously looking at all the all the you know looking or correcting problems in your existing relationship that is also very important so many time because of our silly reasons we kind of you know disconnect with people or we don't understand the contribution of others people so those kind of egoistic issue and small uh, issues which many time create too much of issues out of it and uh, our relationship is hampered at least those things can be avoided in order to improve the existing relationship and you can build more relationship primarily by doing let's say you know volunteering activities or let's say you have some hobbies let's say you like mountaineering you can join some mountaineering club you can find so many like minded people and connect to those kind of people uh, some people even enjoy the company of pets also that can be also helpful in the western countries because people are social circles relationships are shrinking uh, people are going you know and uh, everybody has pets in their home so they also kind of connect with pets and that also helpful so all these things are there and uh, if you go to that lecture social support or uh, you know coping with social support i have discussed elaborately about these things so you can uh, get more ideas from there Uh, Ritu Yadav is asking any book that you suggest for this course. In this course content, there are already few books already suggested, uh, but I think uh, there is no one book which will have all the content. So I cannot suggest you one book to go for. Uh, so go to the lecture notes. I have for every lecture I have given you lecture notes. Read them. I have also given some references to these notes. You can find out those references from the Google and read more about those things. so i don't have any one bo- particular book to suggest you because there is no one book which will have all this contents uh, go go to uh, you know go through all the lecture notes which will have all the contents and some additional references i have given from where i took all this contents uh, you can read those articles and other things from by uh, from the internet Ritu Yadav is asking one doubt uh, the self esteem of narcissistic personality is high or low it creates a lot of confusion sir uh, narcissistic people uh, the self esteem is actually uh, you know uh, is very unstable it's neither high or low it is very unstable so they always want to be the center of attention so that means they are very insecure kind of people you know so if you are insecure your self esteem is actually not high when we say high doesn't mean high in a sense like you know very high so that means you are always you know boast, boosting about yourself high in the sense we are talking about healthy self esteem means you accept yourself you are comfortable in your own skin so that is the meaning of healthy self esteem you know it is not like you know all the time you are pushing yourself and talking that you know i am the best i am the best then it is not high it is actually kind of you know unstable self esteem in sick out of insecurity those kind of things are coming so in uh, narcissistic people have very unstable self esteem i mean i would not say it is low or high 
uh, but it is more unstable so it is not a fixed high or low but it is unstable sometimes it becomes too high sometimes it becomes very low so there is a meaning of unstable self esteem uh, so that is why you know it is coming out of insecurity you know and uh, sometimes it may arise of because of some low self esteem also but the thing is it they are not staying in either low or high but it is very unstable you know so they would don't want to feel low self esteem all the time wants to be in the at the center of attention so in order to kind of remove those issues they kind of seek from the outside world so if you have a healthy stable self esteem you will not seek so much too much things from outside in order to fulfill your desire to become you know or enhance your self esteem so it is more unstable uh, rather than high or low as such but sometimes it may arise because of lack of self esteem also that people want to kind of fulfill that lack that they have but one thing is very clear it is very unstable <clears throat> okay so uh, now some questions i have already addressed in the <clears throat> live questions so few questions are there in the google sheet so we'll take few more from there so shilvrat is asking uh, will some sample question paper is provided so i have already discussed about that question uh, the <clears throat> questions in the final exam will be very similar to assignment question format is as it is uh, but question there will be you know uh, questions will come beyond this assignments only so don't think all the questions will be from the assignment so read all the lecture notes pro properly try to understand all the terms that are used uh, and the concepts that are discussed uh, then you will not have any problem in answering questions contents are little bit on the higher side because it is 12 weeks like uh, course so but start preparing early so that will be helpful so if you let's say start preparing just one day before exam probably it will be very difficult so prepare your and um, for the for the exam a little bit early read all the lecture notes uh, if you have any doubt go to the video lectures and uh, clarify all the doubts so that will be helpful so finni fatima is asking uh, how to make stress productive so as we have already discussed stress is neither good or bad you know it it is just an experience you know it's just not good not neither good nor bad you know so when it becomes bad when it overwhelms us too much Uh, that we are not able to deal with it and particularly uh, chronic stress stress means when it is continuously in our life for a long time you know uh, let's say for months and years something is bothering you constantly you know as an undercurrent in your life those kind of stress are the problematic stress you know they because they will harm your physical health and mental health we have already discussed in detailed in uh, many lectures how stress can influence your physical health in terms of both infectious diseases as well as non infectious diseases and also mental health particularly it may cause ptsd and other kind of disorders so uh so if you want to make stress as productive one most important thing is obviously is that you know learn to manage it if you if you were able to manage the stress then you will be able to use it for your benefit and it will become productive so we have already talked about stress may be positive also some stress are positive we are talking about actually in terms of it they become productive in your life so we talked about it that in many ways stress can be positive for example stress gives you stimulus to or motivation to do something in your life you know let's say there was no stress in your life probably you will not do anything so it is because of the stress okay there is a motivation from within you that i want to do something you know because otherwise you know there will be some issue some problem so there is a stress so you do something so it gives you motivation to do something it helps you to kind of grow in your life also it is the challenge and the stress that helps you to grow in your life you mature as a person you know all the great people they become great primarily because they face lot of hurdles in their life 
so the, the stress gives you impetus and the necessary stimulus uh, to grow mentally in your life so so it has many positive roles also uh, so we need to understand and also we have discussed post-traumatic growth a concern that even after traumatic experience also people may grow out of those experiences uh, so uh, so it has many positive aspects so when it becomes positive is that you know one thing is that you need to learn to manage it if it overwhelms you not, and you are kind of succumb to it obviously it will lead to all the disease and the problematic side of it but if you slowly learn to manage it kind of you know uh, deal with it then you can use it and it can become a part of you know uh, help you to grow in your life so one most important thing is obviously the coping strategies that we have discussed and another important thing is within the coping strategies is obviously you know whenever any uh, such situation comes one thing is that you need to break the problems you know if there is a big problem you cannot deal with it at the same time break it you know in a small segment so and understand what i need to do now we have already talked about you know coping effectiveness training program there we have said you know, how to break the big problems into smaller chunks because whenever the big problem comes suddenly you feel ah, how to deal with it? i don't know because it is so overwhelming and you don't know how to do anything about it because you cannot really deal with the bigger problems but you can break them and find out at the present moment what i need to do now so for example you have issues with the money so you cannot you know overnight you cannot become rich you know? It's, it's, it's a problem that needs constant work and probably it will happen sometime but uh, you you can deal with this problem by kind of breaking it in a smaller part and find out what i need to do now probably now you need to find out you know to give the rents of the house where you are living probably that you need to do so now it is a smaller problem so you can deal with those problems if you break them into smaller chunks it is much more manageable than it looks smaller problems because whenever a problem looks bigger and the mental level it becomes much more stressful so this is how you can uh, you know convert a stressful situation into more productive and kind of deal with it so understanding and dealing and learning to cope with it and managing it is most important in terms of making it productive so if you can manage it it will become productive if you cannot manage it it will become problematic so that is the key thing that you should understand Uh, Basita Ali Qureshi is asking, sir, all questions in the exam will be from your lecture notes. Most of the concept obviously will, if you read lecture notes, uh, probably will not have any problem. They will be from those lectures only. No, I will not ask any question that is beyond lectures. So concepts will be from the lecture notes only. Whatever lectures, whatever we have discussed in the lecture, video or whatever lectures, nothing will come beyond that. So some question may be a little bit conceptual in terms of understanding based for example you know if you understand the concept you can understand but the concepts will not be you know something that we have not discussed so all the things that we have discussed from there only the questions will come so kamalika is asking in the initial lecture you have discussed about infectious diseases uh, that occur from stress can you give the name of such diseases so infectious disease means it's a category of disease so any disease uh, that can be uh, that can happen because of infections from germs so it may be bacteria virus whatever it is for example nowadays we are talking about this whole covid situation no, it is an infectious disease because it transforms from one person to another person so any disease any infectious disease uh, stress can influence and it is influenced indirectly by by reducing your immune system so if you are under chronic stress too much of chronic stress one thing that it will do it will reduce your immune system the power of your immune system so if your immune system deteriorates you will be vulnerable to all kinds of infections okay so any infectious disease can happen so so any disease it could be you know any viral disease any bacterial disease whatever skin disease anything can happen which are done by external uh, microbial agents such as virus bacteria so 
stress directly it is not causing infectious disease but indirectly by reducing your immune system so if your immune system reduces you are becoming vulnerable for infections so any kind of infectious disease can happen uh, akshay is asking uh, is it necessary to remember every names of the founders in lecture for example uh, it is not necessary to remember every names of everybody but some concept may be for example some concepts are very prominent concepts so some names you sh should remember but it is not that every sentences where no there is some citations of some person you, you should not worry about those names but some prominent names of some concept proposed by a person those name, uh, it is uh, you, you should remember some names at least the names of one of the founders of concepts or some area of research or something like that you know so those are actually few names only so in the lecture note you may find citation in every sentences you know so you don't have to remember all these uh, names so try to understand the concepts and the terms and uh, the meaning of these terms some founders you can only understand some the big names so those uh, you should uh, remember so basital is asking again <coughs> yes sir we have to learn the name of psychologist for the exam so that is what i'm saying no not every name in the notes you need to remember but some names somebody proposed something you know some concept you will understand if you read the notes so probably those few names you, you should remember somebody founded something you know those kind of names should be remembered not every name that is there in every sentences so in the google sheet priya poddar has asked stress release for students so when you ask a question ask in the form of question so it is not a question but uh, what i can make sense of it is that you know you are talking about for students how they can deal with the stress so again i mean uh, it's not one sentence answer i can i cannot give you so this whole course one major chunk of that course is about coping strategies which is about how to deal with stress so all this thing is applicable for every age group including students so whatever strategies we have discussed they are all applicable for everybody including students also so these methods are kind of these are universal method you know uh, so this will be applicable for every age group anybody can use that so they are beneficial for everybody so so those coping strategies section that we have uh, discussed many lectures go through that so that will be applicable for everybody including the students so another question in the google sheet is uh, sri parna benerji she asked how to combat stress due to uncertainty of career uh, so <coughs> uncertainty of career when it talk about uh, is it um, i think uh, is it probably you are talking about there are some uh, you are not sure where to go which path to take is it about that mm. or is it about employment so i'm not sure what you are talking about here so whatever it is any kind of uncertainty obviously it will create some stress some anxiety anxiety is a better term here because of some future apprehension future uh, uncertainty whenever we feel certain thing uh, mostly we feel anxiety you know obviously there can be stress associated with but stress is mostly in some specific trigger in gives stress but uh, when there is something very uncertain very abstract i don't know what to do where to go so these are mostly related to anxiety symptoms are very similar so for any kind of those kind of uncertainty is bound to create some stress again uh, 
when you talk about uncertainties so one approach to deal with it is there you know you know try to find a solution and uh, start or take a decision where to go what to do that that is a problem focus kind of coping so the problem is creating stress remove that problem try to solve that problem another is manage the emotions i as for for example you know for the time being or the in the present moment i don't know what to do i don't have any solution for it so the then then what 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 is the solution then try to manage your emotions because if you get into too much of negative emotions because uh, of some issue or some problem or uncertainty then you will not be able to solve that problem because then you will be kind of blinded by all the negative emotions so managing emotion is very important in that context also so again emotion focus coping is very important in that context try to manage your emotions then you will be much more clearer in your thoughts what to do now so this has uncertainty i'm sure it will not be for infinite period of time it will be for some time and uh, in that time manage your emotions properly so make that situation as, as much as productive as possible and try to find a solution to that you know so that is the best way solve the problem and it will uh, remove your stress uh, but it may not happen immediately because you may not know what to do immediately so for the time being try to manage your emotion regulate your emotion try to cope with the situation and then it will give more clarity in your thoughts uh, if you are able to manage emotion because under too much of emotions we we lose the clarity of our thought processes then we will not be able to solve the problems because whenever there is an uncertain so you need to solve that problem so there is a problem arising uh, so in that context again managing emotion coping with this uh, situation is very important okay so pavitra is asking you referred in lecture that there exist few online support groups of chronic illness for people experiencing same disease to cope up uh i i think pavitra i have already responded to that i personally don't know any such uh, uh, support group uh, uh, but you know because if today's world you know everything is online at least there are for every areas of life you will have some groups you know people kind of form groups you know even whatsapp group or facebook group or there are many websites that deals with particular problem so people let's say people with various chronic diseases for example cancer or aids so people have kind of similar people you know kind of connect with each other even so there are some off offline maybe they are in many various cities so and online also it is so many such groups are there if you just google it you will find lot of such groups so for various diseases you know people with hiv cancer whatever it is you know so they kind of form a group support group in the sense basically you know you share with each other problem because we are they are facing similar issues and problems uh, so those kind of groups so depending on the problems probably you know you can search in the googles and um, uh, people also have facebook groups also probably so you you need to search depending on what kind of problem so these are not like one group you know depending on the nature of your problem there may be different kinds of groups available uh, personally i don't know any group because you know i am till now i have not kind of sort those kind of groups uh, but these are there because sometimes i search in the google and there are so many groups are available people with alzheimer disease so, so many people you know different kinds of chronic diseases people have groups where they connect with each other probably in the indian context it may not be that prevalent i don't know but in the western context there are so many groups are available so it is better you search in the google and try to find out um, indian context it may be less uh, um, but there may be also i'm not sure about that Pail Jana is asking: Is this course any use for a chemistry student? Uh, Pail, this course is—I uh, mean, as I already said, this can be taken by any student, irrespective of the discipline, because this is not a uh, course about a very specialized uh, 
content it is quotes about our own life the problems the kind of stress the coping and the well-being happiness and this is applicable for everybody i mean no one in the in the world this concept will not be applicable to that person there will not be any anyone no? so it so these are these are universal concepts applicable to everybody's life uh, so irrespective of your discipline uh, this, you, you can learn uh, benefit from these concepts so these are concept related to your human lives so if you are a human being this will be relevant but obviously this course is not for chemistry it will not increase your knowledge of chemistry but it will increase the knowledge about human behavior and about and give insight about your own life again uh, ritu parna also asked how to relieve from our daily life stress so again these questions i already said you know i cannot just give you one line answer this whole course is about that we talked elaborately about stress and the nature of stress and the characteristics of stress and uh, how to cope and coping strategies elaborately you know so everything is connected to that only so go through those lectures ragini is asking why are we all losing or lacking patience ragini i mean i i would not make a comment like that that is it is not right to generalize it for everybody that everybody is lacking patience uh, that may not be true some people may have this quality i mean uh, lacking patience or losing patience may depend on you know different factors sometimes it is because of the situation you know so there is a situation is forcing you to lose patience some situations are kind of unbearable you know so anybody may lose patience that is okay fine but sometimes losing patience is out of one's personal characteristics that person is kind of uh, you know his characteristics are like that he lose patience very often without any really objective reason then we need to do something probably if it is uh, influencing your life hampering your life then we need to find out this is not okay and it is creating problem in your life and uh, the first thing is obviously realization for anything for any change to happen first you need to understand okay there is some issue some problem then only you can change it so then if you realize it slowly slowly uh, if, if you have enough motivation you can change it any behavior can be changed okay so so the reason can be in the situation it can be in the person also both the reasons are there so david is asking sir i am very competitive especially in things like sports so if a person says anything about me i take it personally and use it to motivate myself how to stop or manage taking things personal so david i mean uh, becoming competitive in sports and they, they, I, i don't see any problem in it because when you are in a sports uh, you need to win you are in the sports primarily because uh, there is a competition and uh, becoming competitive and uh, desiring to win there is no problem there is no issue I mean, it is perfectly normal so and then you were saying you know if somebody says something you will take it personally mm. and use it to motivate myself so if you use take it personally and use it to motivate yourself so it may be a positive thing i don't know in what context more specifically you are talking about it but let's say you are not becoming destructive you are not started abuse starting abusing another person if somebody says something bad about you or something you you are not abusing that person but you take it uh, as a kind of hint and motivate yourself and prove that you know i am not worthy of what you are saying then it is a very positive thing so you are rather than you know channelizing your anger or emotion in a positive direction uh, which can be good so 
but if you let's say take it personally and all the time start abusing another person or start uh, becoming aggressive and harm other people then it is a problem but if you take but what i could understand that you take it positively or take it um, motivate yourself that means take it in a, in a positive light and channelize your anger or emotion in a such direction that you then perform better then it is okay i mean that is good because then you know how to channelize your energy uh, so taking things personally means what basically uh, i mean in general if you talk about it the context in which you are talking about probably i don't see much problem in it but some people use the term taking personally in the context that you know when they say i take too personally means they become sensitive and touchy about any comments that is given to them so they cannot tolerate that you know uh, that is coming primarily because of you know one reason could be you know too much of self concern you are not able to take yourself lightly uh, too serious about yourself i mean uh, so the thing is you know one main important thing is that observe yourself how do you react self observation is very important uh, so it is the typical ego that comes immediately you know if somebody says something it comes immediately and it is true for most of the people you know this is how we are designed but some people are too touchy about it so then it constant emotional turmoil may happen in your life which is you know which can create problem so taking uh, not think personally one thing you should understand is that you know, try to observe yourself you know look at yourself how do you react why you are taking it personally i mean sometimes it is there is no sense if somebody is saying okay you, you may also ignore it you know uh, if you kind of slowly observe your reaction pattern and uh, you become conscious of it so meditations and other thing is are very helpful actually in this context you know so it helps you to un uh, understand your reaction pattern and you become more conscious so automatic reaction somebody says something and you immediately kind of react to something those automatic reaction decreases you will become more mature in a sense and you will be able to understand okay you know doesn't make much in, it is not important to me you ignore it you simply you will overlook it uh, so it will not happen out of in one day you need to observe your mindset how you are reacting and uh, especially when it uh, gives lot of problems and emotional problems you need to question why i am becoming so in, uh, so depressed or so emotional about it what is the reason why why it is happening to me so then you will find answer it is somewhere related to your thoughts and becoming things taking things too you are becoming too self conscious these things will happen slowly slowly if you start observing yourself uh, some meditation uh, meditations and other things mindfulness exercises all this thing can be helpful in this context in this context so try to learn to observe yourself this is one of the best human quality or capacity that human being self they can observe themselves and see okay this is not right this is wrong i can observe my own pattern so be so those things will be helpful actually so david is asking taking things personally in a sense that it's if someone says that he she is better than me in a basketball i take it personally to motivate myself and show them that so that is what i'm saying i mean uh, in this context i don't see any problem you are channelizing it in a positive direction but uh, by taking things if you start abusing that person or start becoming aggressive and start fighting with that person then it is a negative thing and it will be problematic but if you can so basically you are using you are channelizing your emotion in a positive direction which is good actually there is no problem in it so they said something you prove them wrong uh, i don't see any problem in it it is okay uh, so in that sense i mean i i don't think any problem is there no? you are channelizing it in the right direction It's fine. Don't worry about that. Hi.
Arshita is asking how to let go of a friend you are drifting apart from but don't want to lose friendship. So what I could understand is you are asking about uh, you know, how to let go of a friend you are drifting apart from but don't want to lose friendship. It's not very clear to me what you were trying to say. So basically, you know, you want to let go of some people from your life. So again, I mean, so many things actually depends on this kind of situation. So I cannot just abruptly make some comment about these things. Uh, but you can always let go. I mean, uh, sometimes you need to let go of certain relationships. If you see it is necessary, you need to do that. But it should not come out of bitterness. Let go means with necessary understanding you are letting that person go without any bitterness on other If that is happening, it is very good. So I cannot really comment on this thing because I really am not, I'm not able to understand what exactly you are trying to ask. <coughs> so I mean, um, how much time we have still? five six minutes okay so if you have any more questions you can ask we, we still have five minutes probably uh, so I mean this is actually the last live session and I hope uh, it has helped you uh, number of lectures are a little higher uh, but it is a 12 week course so we cannot do much so I wanted to squeeze in as many topics as possible to which are important for well-being of you of all, all of us uh, so if you see this code there are few broad things that we have discussed in this course one is obviously <coughs> we started talking with stress we try to define it we try to understand the characteristics and the consequences in terms of physical health mental health uh, in terms of you know positive outcome, negative, negative outcome, you know, in terms of positive impact also. So all these things we have started talking in the first, you know, first few lectures or modules of this of this course. Then we talked about coping part where, you know, now after understanding stress and various dimensions and consequences, we addressed how to deal with it. So that was the next aspect of this course where we talked about after understanding stress how to deal with it so we talked about uh, you know different layers of coping strategies physical ways mental ways coping with the deeper levels such as social support meditations and mindfulness all these things we have discussed and in the third phase we talked about concepts which are beyond stress uh, which are talk which which are about human well-being so we talked about the concept of well-being and happiness. We talked about well-being and the, the different types of well-being, hedonic well-being, eudaimonic well-being. And uh, in the hedonic, we talked about hedonic is basically we talked about happiness, you know. And there we talked about various concepts uh, in terms of positive emotions. We also talked about you know uh, sustainable happiness model. We talked about what are the barriers in happiness. And how can we promote happiness in our life? We talked about various activities which can promote happiness, like gratitude, acts of kindness, you know, and uh, how social comparison is influencing happiness. We talked about you know how to use signature strengths, the concept of flow. So this, some of this may be coming in the upcoming lectures. So all these things we are talking about are activities or concepts by using them applying them in our life we can enhance our happiness level or our well-being and then then the last two modules will be about i think 11 12 modules will, will be about eudynamic well-being concepts where we'll talk about where we have already talked we, we will talk about concepts such as meaning in life how because which is very important for our well-being how to find meaning in life what is the meaning meaning of meaning in life 
or how it is important or relevant for well being what are the dimensions of it we'll also talk about you know the concept of self actualization from humanistic psychological perspective uh, the human beings have many hidden potential how can we understand that and actualize that so we'll, we'll, uh, this will be discussed in one of the lecture then there will be concept called uh, you know we'll talk about intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation sometimes we are motivated from within us and it has a totally different impact on our life and the kind of task that we do if i am really interested and the motivation is coming from within me that is the meaning of intrinsic motivation and sometimes uh, uh, we do a task primarily because the motivation is outside i want to get something out of it so this is called extrinsic motivation so we'll talk about the, you know in, in the last modules we'll talk this concepts will also be covered how these intrinsic extrinsic motivations are related to our well being uh, so motivation and well being we'll talk about then uh, then the last lecture will be about life goals why it is important to have set of life goals and how they are important in terms of enhancing our well being so all these concepts will be discussed so few more lectures are still there uh, they are also very important and uh, they will be also uh, give you a lot of insights about certain aspects of our life which are relevant for well being so these are some of the things uh, i hope this course uh, will help you give you some insights about your life and um, be helpful or facilitate at least you know some understanding in your life uh, to enhance your well being so if it at least helps you in some way then this the whole purpose of this course will be fulfilled since this is the last uh, discussion session for this course if it uh, so probably you know uh, i should i wish you all the best those who are registered for exam and uh, you can score good mark there should not be any problem read those lecture notes properly and uh, you will have no problem okay so with this i will end this session thank you